where to fly, the mere sight of him sent shivers down opponent's spines. For wherever he went, he brought along a gang appropriately named Doomsday. Harvey Martin, Thomas Henderson, and the rest had racked up a monstrous 38 sacks during their 8-0 start. And their long list of victims included St. Louis quarterback Jim Hart. In a week four encounter in St. Louis, Doomsday knocked Hart right out of the game. Nevertheless, coach Don Coriel and his Cardinals couldn't wait to get their hands on the Cowboys. In each of the past three years, these two teams had split their season series, and this rivalry grew hotter with each battle. Nobody knew this better than 37-year-old tight end Jackie Smith. Smith and the Cardinals had never won in Texas Stadium, and the way things started on this night, it looked as if they'd have to wait at least one more year. Martin and Henderson flex their muscle early, but the Cardinals refuse to back down. Number 85, Mel Gray, moved towards the open field and couldn't believe it when Henderson caught him from behind. But still, the cards kept coming. Number 21, Terry Metcalf, had more moves than even the Dallas Flex defense could cope with, and he threatened to shock the Cowboys with an early score. By the length of a football, Metcalf fell short, but St. Louis came away with a field goal and a three to nothing lead. On defense, the Cardinals had no nickname to intimidate with, only size and speed. Like Cowboys themselves, they corralled Preston Pearson and forced Roger Staubach off the prairie and into the big sky. Safety Jeff Severson, number 46, beat Tony Hill to his spot and came away with the ball. This play snapped a string of 137 consecutive passes without an interception for Staubach. And it showed the Cardinals that these Cowboys could be taken. Charlie Waters promptly removed that thought from their mind. He also removed the ball from Metcalf's grasp and in one bold stroke restored normality in Dallas. In Dallas, normality equals superiority. A year before, he had established a new NCAA career rushing record and as a rookie in the NFL, Tony Dorsett was still head and shoulders above the crowd. On the rookie's back, Dallas had leaped ahead 7-3, and the offense seemed firmly in place. Then the defense leaped to its normal place, on the quarterback's back. While some had elevated the sack to an art form, Harvey Martin made it a form of torture with an amazing 23 in 14 games. Watching from the sidelines, Roger the Dodger had seen enough to learn the virtues of running away. With the ball tucked under his arm, Staubach truly was an artist. But the game's most complete quarterback also knew when it was time to get off the ground and put it in the air. Billy Joe Dupree's soft hands cradled Staubach's soft toss for his third touchdown in his many games. Dupree had earned a reputation as a well-rounded team player, and as he put his club up by 11 here, he looked also to demonstrate the versatility that earned him his second straight Pro Bowl start. Unfortunately, the Cardinals still had other ideas concerning this game, and were not about to let it become a showcase for the Cowboys All-Star. So backup safety Randy Hughes, number 42, made his case for Dallas's depth. As halftime drew near with the score still 14 to three, Efren Herrera's quick kick made it even clearer that from substitute players to gadget plays, the Cowboys had all the angles covered. When 
Dallas led in the second half of a game in 1977, Doomsday became more than a moniker. It became a reality. The Cowboys were too tall and too mean. Even when their offense fell short of perfection, the Cowboys managed to keep their opponents' backs to the wall. Once you were against the wall, the theory went, crushing you became that much easier. Although the Cardinal who picked that ball up had probably never made a poor decision, he did show St. Louis's spunk. On your own one yard line in the face of the NFL's deadliest pass rush, spunk had to count for something. It enabled Jim Hart to hang in until the very last second. And while that may look like little solace from this angle, it actually became the game's pivotal moment. For some 50 yards downfield, a penalty flag meant pass interference on Dallas and renewed life for St. Louis. Number 24, Wayne Morris turned it on to become the game's leading rusher with 72 yards. And after Hart hit his young tight end, J.V. Kane, the Big Red were red hot. Morris's leap didn't look as pretty as Dorsett's earlier score, but the judges still awarded him six points. And besides, Dorsett wasn't looking quite so pretty anymore anyway. Suddenly, the Cowboys were as flat as old Coke, and the Redbirds were making the big plays. Number 22, Roger Worley's deflection saved a touchdown, and Dallas could find no place to operate. But when all the holes were filled and all the other receivers covered, Dallas always had Drew Pearson. To witness Pearson was to watch a highlight film come to life before your eyes, where he'd done the exact same thing a hundred times before. This catch and run set up a Herrera field goal as Dallas rebuilt its lead to seven. Such a display of resiliency by Dallas had broken the spirit of many a comeback in the past, but these Cardinals had the heart of a champion. Hart hit Mel Gray in stride, 49 yards downfield, and tied the score. These birds of prey smelled blood and swooped in for the kill. The Cardinals picked Staubach from his pocket and undressed the Jolly Roger with some doom-like defense of their own. Drew was twisted like a pretzel and assaulted from all angles. Dallas now found itself against the wall and its pass protection crumbled under the pressure. Number 63, John Zook nearly trapped Staubach for a safety. But if what St. Louis was doing on defense seemed surprising, what came next seemed surreal. Harry Metcalf mocked Doomsday, first with his moves and next with the ball. Then St. Louis called on its legendary tight end to make the nightmare complete. Jackie Smith had caught more balls than any tight end in history, but none provided the satisfaction of this game winner in Dallas. Smith had announced his plans to retire at season's end and the scars of some 30 dogfights with Dallas sweetened this last crowning moment of greatness.
captain comeback himself could not overcome destiny on this night, and the Cardinals' defense sealed his fate. Time had run out on Dallas, whose dreams of an undefeated season were shattered. Ironically, it was Tom Landry who coerced Smith out of retirement in 1978 to help Dallas reach another Super Bowl. By the look on Smith's face, playing for the Dallas Cowboys could never have been as sweet as beating them.